Last section for chapter 11, we've talked about why we build simulations, muscle actions during stance, swing and crouch gait. Now we wanna talk about the effects of walking speed. What I'm showing here is simulations of walking at four different speeds, slow, just below self-selected, self-selected and fast walking. We care about muscle actions during various speeds because we walk at different speeds. We also analyze muscle actions in individuals who have physical disabilities or with age and they typically walk more slowly. We need to know whether the effects that we're seeing are due to speed or due to some other uh, impairment. So we need to really understand actions not only during self-selected speed but at other speeds as well. Muscle-driven simulations are a powerful tool to do this. Chan John uh, was in the lab and developed this long simulation at the time, uh, 2012, a simulation of 10 gait cycles. It reproduced the, the dynamics, the kinematics, the muscle excitations, and the ground reaction forces quite well. And then we could go in and use this to answer fundamental questions. So one fundamental question is this. How do muscles contribute to support and progression over a range of walking speeds. So again, what do I mean by support? By support, I mean vertical acceleration of the mass center. That's what provides body weight support. And progression, how do we modulate speed? It's the fore aft acceleration of the mass center. So pretty simple question, and how do those vary with speed? To do that, Mei Lu, who's a doctoral student in the lab at the time, developed uh, then what seemed like a small army of simulations. We had eight subjects walking at four different speeds. All of that data is available in uh, the simtk.org website, so you're welcome to that. And May and her collaborators analyzed those simulations to gain insight into this question. Just a quick refresher, the ground reaction force determines the mass center acceleration. And we want to analyze a muscle's contributions to ground reaction force. Conceptually, this is how we can do it. We have a muscle-driven simulation. We can then make a small change. Let's say the muscle's generating 1,000 newtons. We change it by one newton. So we do a small differential of the force in the muscle. And we then can compute the difference in the ground reaction force arising from that muscle. If we then multiply that by the muscle force, we can get the muscle-induced contribution to the ground reaction force. And that's in relation to the muscle-generated acceleration of the mass center. So that's very briefly how we analyze a simulation to get that result. So let's take a look at vasti, the three big uh, quadriceps. It is on an early stance, remember that. It supports body weight. It slows your mass center. It extends the knee, as you can see. And interestingly, it moves many degrees of freedom. You can see this. It not only generates a knee extension moment, but it also generates accelerations at the hip. So vasti supports and slows. And you can see that here in the ground reaction force. So what I'm plotting here is the acceleration of the mass center during very slow, slow, free, and fast walking. So let's look first at just free speed walking. And we've seen this before. So here's the total, it looks a lot, the acceleration looks a lot like the ground reaction force. And vasti is on during early stance. It's part produces body weight support and backward acceleration. In fast walking, it does more of the same, slightly bigger. You see the ground reaction forces are bigger. Vasti excitation goes up with speed and produces a larger vertical and horizontal ground reaction force. Interestingly though, for Vasti, during slow and very slow walking, it does almost nothing. The excitation of the muscle goes way down, the force goes way down, and it doesn't produce much vertical support or backward acceleration. How can that be? It's because at normal speed walking, the ground reaction force crosses behind the knee. That generates a knee flexion moment. 
the vasi are needed to counteract that, so they're on and excited generating a ground reaction force. At slow walking, we look a lot like these passive dynamic walkers. We walk with much more extended knees, and so you get more vertical support from skeletal alignment. You can see that here, the knee flexion angle versus gait cycle during slow walking and during fast walking. You see there's much greater flexion in fast walking, and the muscles play a much more active role. So when I think of these passive dynamic walkers here, I think of them not as free speed walking, but as slow or very slow walking. They're really representing those slow speeds of walking more than they are uh, typical walking. Well, let's look at gluteus maximus. It is on an early stance, and it supports and slows the mass center. So you can see this in the ground reaction force. Again, free speed walking, fast walking, slow walking, and very slow walking. You see the ground reaction forces are pretty flat and very slow and slow. You get this modulation in free and fast. Gluteus maximus is on and providing that body weight support. And you can see it here. So it's on in early stance. In the simulation, we can do the magic of turning all the other muscles off, turning off gravity, exciting just the gluteus maximus, and we see it extends the hip, it produces, it also extends the knee, even though it doesn't cross the knee, and it produces a vertical ground reaction force resulting in this body weight support. At fast speeds, it does a little more. At slow speeds, much like the vast eye, it turns way down and does very little because we get more from skeletal alignment at those very low speeds. Now, soleus, remember, it's on in late stance. It provides body weight support and forward propulsion. At, uh, what you can see is this is such an important function that if you turn off the soleus, you get much uh, excessive flexion there. And that's why we think the soleus is an important contributor. Weak soleus uh, force is a uh, contributor to crouch gait in many individuals because it's so important to body weight support if it can't be activated and generating force because of weakness in cerebral palsy, for example, we don't get this beautiful body weight support and end up with a crouch gait. At fast, we get more of the same, but at slow, you see, remember Vasti and Gmax, they kind of shut down and didn't do much? Soleus is essential, even at slow and very slow speeds. We need that at the end of the stance phase because the knee's more flexed. You're beginning to load the other limb. You need it for the forward propulsion and body weight support. So that's just three of the many muscles. If you have a simulation, you can study the action of any of these muscles on the mass center acceleration and on the joints. You can figure out what the hamstrings are doing at the hip and at the knee. You can figure out what the soleus muscle is doing, not just for body weight support, but how it's extending the knee and extending the hip as well. And these simulations provide a, a, a detailed summary that lets you analyze muscle function in great detail. So that's where we are with chapter 11. We've tried to motivate why we build simulations, looked at the stance phase, swing phase, crouch gait, and now the effects of walking speed. Uh, all of these tools are available to you. Feel free to analyze the data in as much detail as you want. Thanks very much.